Hey, it's AP, and today we are putting together and painting a chopper model kit from Star Wars Rebels. Check it out. As soon as I picked up my resin printer, I knew I was in for a world of model making magic now that kits are literally at the press of a button at a truly remarkable resolution. And you can find 3D printable files everywhere, and the cost ranges from free to, well, a lot. Now, I somehow stumbled onto Big Bang Collectibles shop on Etsy, and holy cow, my credit card started hurting. Colin over at Big Bang Collectibles has created some amazingly beautiful 3D printable models. He has a Super Star Destroyer, he has an AT-80, -AT, he has a TIE Bomber, and so much more. It's crazy. Now, I've never done a resin printed kit before, so I figured I'd start easy with his 1 6th scale chopper model. For those of you who don't know Chopper, he's a Frankenstein astromech droid that was first introduced in the Star Wars Rebels series and quickly became a fan favorite as the saucy, outspoken, and full of attitude droid sidekick to Hera, Kanan, and the rest of the Ghost crew. Now before I start painting and putting this kit together, go ahead and hit those like and subscribe buttons so you don't miss out on future episodes. Okay. Now that you've made my day, let's dive in. Now before putting this together, I did have to do some sanding of the parts. There were some tight fits, but also I haven't yet mastered setting up supports for my resin print. So there were a lot of marks left on the pieces that I had to sand off. They looked like little resin goose pumps. It was really gross and creepy. Now, I also primed the paints with a plastic adhesion promoter to help get the paint to grip better. I figured I'd spare you from a sanding and priming montage so I can treat you to a painting and building montage. Yay! Now for this, I have a bunch of different paints that I'm going to be using. I have some Vallejo Surface Primer. I have some Createx colors. I have a green and uh, red. I have some Tamiya's. I have a little bit of a panel line wash. Some empty containers so I can mix some paints. Well, the colors that we're painting Chopper in are, we have some orange, yellow, uh, kind of like an aqua green, a dirty green, more kind of yellowish grays. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to prime him in black and then I'll mist coat him with white. I like using black as a primer because when you mist over with your primary color like white or orange, you get this dirty, darker coat which just makes the model look weathered without much effort. Oh, and when painting with an airbrush, use gloves. Don't be silly like me. No fancy glues here, just good old fashioned super glue. The feet pins were a pain in the ass. They were super tight, so I used a drill bit and sandpaper to make them work. That didn't work, I got the drill out. And when that didn't work, I got a bigger drill bit. There we go. Time to make some dark orange. This took a few tries, and if I had to guess, it'd be three parts orange to two parts red. It was really just trial and error here. After the orange dried, I taped off the panels and added the yellow details. The eyes that came with the kit didn't fit well, so I used some brass pipes to make metal ones. I primed the eyes with Vallejo Black and then put some aluminum rub and buff on them. It didn't come out great, but Chopper is supposed to be a hot mess of scavenged parts, so I'll just let it slide this time. I started painting the eye holes black and then changed my mind and used some gun metal just to get a little glimmer in there.
All right, I'm getting to the point where I now just need to do the detailing paint. And uh, the first thing I'm going to detail is the, the leg. So on the leg piece here, on the upper part, on the upper part of the leg, uh, it's painted a dark green. So I'm going to have to mask this off and then put a base coat of black on and then I'll overspray it with, um, with a transparent green and hopefully that'll give me a nice darkish uh, green. But there's also uh, a lot of chipping that is on this particular leg if you look at some of the reference photos. So I'm gonna use something I've never used before and that is liquid mask. This is Abtilung 502. It's Abtilung 502. It's a liquid latex and pretty much you just dab it on the spots that you want to look like it's been chipped away with a brush um, or I'm probably going to use like a toothpick or something to, to scratch it on. And then you let it dry for about 20 minutes. You spray paint over it or, or paint over it. And when the paint is dry, you just kind of go back and you scrape off the liquid latex and you should have this very decent looking chipped paint scheme. I'm very excited to see how this turns out. So let's, um, let's tape off the leg and uh, prime it and then put some of this liquid mask on. Liquid mask. This stuff goes on really easily with a paintbrush. Just put a few dabs on. You don't have to go crazy like I did. After it dries for about 20 minutes, you can put your top coat on. So I let the top coat dry uh, for a couple hours. So now I'm just going to carefully go through and scrape off the latex and see if this actually did anything. So let's see. Just kind of scraping. Oh yeah. I'm just carefully scraping it off. Oh, that, that chip actually came out pretty nice. Okay. And you can see kind of where your latex is because they're a little like little bumps. Yeah, I'm just going to use my finger to rub it off. And, and you can do too much. Uh, and I think this, this is borderline too much. Uh, I probably made my, my chips a little bit too big, um, but I'm okay. I, I feel good about that. So, okay, what's next? The leg holder pin thing that came with the files didn't print correctly, so instead of wasting more resin, I had a piece of pipe that fit perfectly. The very last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a matte clear coat on this to protect the paint job. But other than that, I think this is, this is good to fight the empire. Well, I will say for my very first resin printed model kit, I'm satisfied, I'm happy. Uh, there was a lot more cleanup than I was expecting and I think that had to do with A, 
my uh, my newbiness to resin printing, so like getting rid of the the support marks and things like that. Uh, but also some of the pieces didn't fit together that great, so I ended up having to uh, improvise, like putting in the metal eyes here and using the metal uh, metal bar here for the legs. But I think actually that adds to the the droid component tree of this. Uh, I love how the colors came out. The latex chipping on the side here was really cool. I can't wait to use more of that. Lots of rub and buff. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm super happy with this. I will leave a link to the Etsy store where I purchased this below so you can give it a try. I'll also leave you a link to my resin printer. I just love it. I think it's a fantastic printer, but there are so many printers out there at different price points. So buy what's in your budget. Don't just take my word for it. So did you enjoy this video? Did you find the ASMR component soothing? Well, let me know in the comments below. Have you built one of these before? Uh, what would you have done different? And if you are a Chopper fan in general, well, just let me know that in the comments below as well. If you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you a thing and it does help the channel grow and I do appreciate it. And until next time, well, keep beep boop beeping. <laughs> we'll see you later. I'm gonna run over